taking my new Bluetti system back to the boat. That 10 minute drag around the marina. It's gonna be worth it once I get it on board. That was the easy bit. Um, and I gotta physically lift it onto the boat. I'm not sure the actual weight. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll, I'll put it somewhere here. Right, that's got, physically got the uh, new Bluetti system onto the boat. I've got to get it down past Deborah and down in the engine room. But the problem I've got, let me show you. Yeah. De -de -de -de. I have my old faithful 2000 watt hour Bluetti that I've been using the last two years. Now, as you'd have remembered from my review video two years ago, I think I can put a link up here if you haven't seen that. We primarily use this to run the washing machine. Um, it will do a two hour load, it will do two one hour loads on there, be using it, but it's where we're going to put the new one. Um, because the new one's in two, two sections, I might have to have a move about here or get it over this side with my toolboxes and move my tools over here, we'll have to see. But I'm going to get this out and then get the other unit dragged down the back here first. Right, here comes the first, the first part of the puzzle, and that weighs 21 kilos. The other bit weighs 36 kilos. <coughs> so that is the problem I have. I'm just going to bung it up here where the oh, where the old one was. And it it does fit in there nice. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to get the other unit on this shelf. So it might be I'll have to find a new home for all this under here and then drill a hole through for the link cables so that they'll both link up. That's one option. The other option, as I said, move that. What would you guys do? Right, now off to get the other bit, the heavy bit. Thirty-six kilos. That is, that is heavy. Although my daughter picked it up to put it in the back of my van, and uh, well, she put me to shame. Oh, jeez. Right. So that was me um, getting the AC three hundred and the B three hundred battery pack onto the boat. I've been running it now for a couple of months and absolutely blown away. The main goal of a plug and play system like this for me is to be able to get uh, do away with my lead acid batteries. Lead acid batteries are fine but it's the, the chemistry and the way they charge, how long they take to charge and with the uh, lithium ion phosphate uh, they charge so much quicker but I shall talk a little bit later uh, at the end of the video of the things I've got to do to get the most out of this unit. Right, well it fits in there a treat. Right, now as you all know, I do love an instruction book. So I'm gonna sit down for an hour um, reading the instructions on this, probably go online, read some more information on it, and uh, then have a, a plug-in and a little play. Right, so it comes with a myriad of cables. There's our link cable to link the two units together, various solar PV cables, mains charging cables. Um, yeah, so let's get started. All right, just as a temporary measure, I've pulled both the units forward so this cable will just link around the front here. I think if it ends up staying here, I'll be drilling a hole uh, so the cable will drop down through. Well, decided it is gonna stay there, so I've just drilled drilled a hole, now I'm gonna pop the lead up through. Yeah, so. That will come up through there, and then I can push both those units back then. And we got Alfie wanting to get in on the action. Um, yeah, good people at Blue Etty have sent me this um, portable solar panel. I've done reviews on portable panels before, and I've always been a little bit critical of how flimsy they've been, but it's it's in the name portable. They're not going to be as solid as a rigid panel. Well, this this one's blown me away. It's a four-piece uh, four-piece system. Um, it. <laughs> 
in the wind it can be awkward to assemble yourself but I've found the best way to do it and you've got a carry handle two clasps here release it and if you open it up into the first stage on the back you've got these pop-out legs and I've just demonstrated that I've opened it the wrong way up so we'll turn it round Pop those legs out first. And then the additional sections. Now once that's in, in place, that is that is very sturdy. Obviously, um, you're gonna erect it facing the sun and not facing away from the sun. I've just done it so that you people can see and Alfie can see how easy it is to uh, to put up. Yeah, so it's quite a substantial panel and 350 watts. I'm not sure of the weight of it. I'll have to check on the data sheet. But what I'm now gonna try and do now is just get it balanced on the back of the boat so I can have the input from that uh, going into my Blue Etty and the input from my own solar. I think I've got 300, no, sorry, I've got 690 watts of solar on the top of my boat, and this will be an additional 350 watts. I believe the battery on there is fully charged at the moment, so we'll put a load on, like the immersion heater, and we'll um, see how, uh, see what difference having this extra solar panels makes. Yeah, the plan is, once I get my jetty finished, I can have my portable panels on there, with a lead um, thrown across to the boat, additional solar going in there, and, and then we go out, go out cruising, and we can fold that up, put that in the boat, and that will, like I say, give us another 350 watts of input. Yeah, so I wouldn't advise precariously balancing the panels on the top of your boat if there's anything more than a gentle breeze. There's no wind today. When I film these things, I try to film them warts and all, so when things go wrong, uh, you get to see what has gone wrong, why it's gone wrong, and how I've res resolved it. You have two different um, inputs, because there's two separate MPPT controllers in there. Um, now, you can have two solar going in, or you can have one solar, a different DC source going into there. Now, when you have uh, the two solars going in, you have to set it up for um, PV parallel, parallel enable. Now I've done that to on. Um, I think I've set everything else right, but for some reason we are actually getting DC source PV, DC source two PV. Um, so that is right, but we were getting this alarm uh, parallel PV paralleling error. Now I need to read up on that. I don't know whether um, each array needs to be matched with the portable panels. I've got 350 watts. With my rigid panels on the roof, I've got 685 or 695. And whether that's causing the problem, I don't know. So I'm gonna put the camera down, have a little play, and then come back to you. Right, so I've turned PV paralleling off, and it worked okay on the one array. I've plugged in the second array, um, which is my mobile um, portable panel, the 300 watt Bluetti one, and it's it's working okay. So I'm not sure that again. Like I say, I'm going to re read up on that and when I'm sat at the dinette. I'll uh, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So I can only assume if you're paralleling uh, PV arrays up, they have to be matched. Yeah. So as soon as we. As soon as we take that off of PV Parallel Enable, it actually shows your uh, two DC sources. One is PV and the other it sets as others. So the immersion heat is now clicked off. Um, we're running the boat completely off, off the Blue Etty. Um, our load has run about the 120 watt, 120 watts mark and we've got just over 500 watts going in so it's not going to take too long to get that back up to 
And one of the things, being a gadget type guy, one of the things I love about this is no matter where I am in the country, providing I've got a, a cellular phone signal and this is connected to my Wi-Fi in the boat, I can check on these readings, I can switch my AC and DC on and off all from the app on my phone. Been plugged into the solar today, so um, solar's been plugged into the AC300 which in turn charges the B300, so we're all at 100% so that gives us um, 3,072 watts hour of uh, usable power to use. I'm going to plug through my uh, kilowatt hour meter um, so we can see if we can get anywhere near this figure. Now the last unit I did, um, it wasn't a Blue Etty, it was another manufacturer. I think we, we got around about the 85% um, efficiency. So I'm hoping to get a little bit better out of this. As I've explained before in other videos, you're never going to get um, that maximum capacity out because of the inefficiencies in the unit. Um, it's it's power in itself. The uh, inverter itself takes takes power. But the nearer we can get to that 100%, the better. So I'm looking between 85 and 90% efficiency while we're um, running this. Primarily, everything coming off of it is going to be 230 volt. Through the through the built-in um, inverter in here, I may plug at some time plug my laptop into some of the USB uh, ports to charge it. And what what is the time? I think we're about seven o'clock in the evening. Um, so it's going to run all through the night. The immersion heater, which is on a timer, will kick on at about six in the morning. So that is going to power the immersion heater as well and then normal stuff during the day washing machine which i think is a 1600 watt load and various bits and pieces we'll do um, and deplete this until it shuts down um, i think they uh, remain a five percent capacity they, they won't actually deplete uh, completely they'll keep five percent capacity in there before they shut down um, but i'll switch all that over now and see how we Let's go just double check everything is okay my ac is on we are sitting at 100%. There's the B300, the 3072 watt hour battery pack. And there is my little plug in watt hour meter. I showed you this before various different displays the voltage, and the amps it's drawing at any one time, and the lowest watt wattage load, the highest wattage load. I've set it at 34 pence per unit, kilowatt hour for electricity, and um, we shall see how we go. Switch over from shore power to the Bluetti. We should actually see a load come on to that now. And I think we have 102 watts. I don't know how that will relate to it on there. 0.3 amps. 72 watts and it's showing 102 on there so that is probably um, reading what the whole unit is using so there's 20 30 watts powering itself uh, but the actual load is 72 watts which we're pulling on the boat and i think the only thing really on at the moment is um, some of the little fairy lights we've got plugged into the 230 volt sockets in the fridge right continuing with the um, load ca uh, capacity test it's been on, I think, about um, seven and a half hours, and the display there is reading 64%. And just as we always do, whenever we do a capacity test on any of these solar generators, we always put the um, automatic washing machine on. And I've shown you before, that's a 1,600 watt load when that is heating the water. Yeah, so at the moment, we're pulling about 180 watts. As soon as that element kicks in, that's going to jump right up. I'm going to sit here um, and wait until that does that. Right, there we go. Heating element has just kicked in. Um, we're now pulling around about 1520 watts. 64% left in there. There should be plenty to heat the water on the washing machine and run that two hour cycle. But I shall keep checking on it and come back and see how we've done at the end of the wash. So we're down to 1%. Now, I'm not going to be too popular when this goes off because Deb's watching her favourite on telly, Strictly Come Dancing. So the telly's going to go off, the router's going to go off. And that's going to take me a couple of minutes to get everything up and running again. Um, yeah, so last 1%, that's going to shut down. 
and there we go just heard a beep yeah and that has gone off so that's gone into alarm mode right so I've turned the boat back onto shore power I've plugged the Bluetti into the mains running from the shore power and the charger has kicked straight in so no worries there there we go 2.329 kilowatt hours out of potential 3072 yeah so I think what I'll do I'll, I'll run that test a couple of times just see how the readings come out um, it may be uh, you get a totally different reading now that we've fully depleted the battery and recharged it also I believe there's a firmware update um, that's available so um, I should do the firmware up update and see if that makes any difference as well hello my darling I thought you'd be watching Strictly no everything everything went off we was in pitch blackness and apart from the these little fairy lights here um, and the telly's not come back on so right oh dear sort it I will oh dear I'm in the doghouse and uh, the sound might be a little bit different because I haven't got my um, external mic on I'm just on the mic on the phone this is what I love about this hour and 40 minutes and we're fully charged um, that's that's from the mains just so I can continue on doing my testing uh, I've got to get my solar upgraded to get the best out of this unit but I'm going to do some more testing tomorrow um, my things but England are beating South Africa we're now at half time so I'm going to go in for another beer and then I'll catch you people later there we go just shut down 17 minutes past 11 which means I can now go to bed and 2697 watt hours so I run that test uh, capacity test three times and got three varying diff different readings the first one I done um, was when we just got the unit and I got 2329 watt hours out of a potential uh, 3072 and that equates to 75.81 percent so not not fantastic but we then depleted the uh, B300 battery pack all the way down, um, recharged that, and then we, when we carried out the test again, um, we got 2,450 watt hours, and that equated to 79.5%, so a jump of 4%. Then I'd done a firmware update, and there was, I think there was, it was three updates. It was a main firmware update, it'd done a BMS update, and something to do with the battery. We run that again and a complete depletion test and got 2697 which pushed that up to 87.8%. Now that's one of the best um, capacity tests I've done on any of the units that I've ever ever done tests and reviews on. So, so well pleased with that. But as we continue to use it I shall periodically do other tests uh, to see how those compare. Now these AC300s have been out for um, t a couple of years now and there's loads and loads of videos out there on YouTube um, reviews very technical reviews on these I tend to do more uh, my type of review is more of how it f would fit into my life or um, an RV or a camper van lifestyle I do do a little bit of technical stuff but I should put some links below if you want some really really um, in-depth technical bench testing um, type of it reviews but like I say I don't, I don't do that and what I love about this is the expandability of it. The system I've got here, I've got the one uh, battery pack giving me 3,072 watt hours. You can have a total of four uh, battery packs and I think that gives you a total of 12,288 watt hours of power, uh, which, which is phenomenal, especially for um, somebody in a cabin or a large RV or big workshop set up or uh, like myself, a narrowboat. The main thing, if you're going to have a large uh, battery system like that and you're going to use a lot of power, you're going to need a good solar um, setup to get that power back in. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I've still got loads of other tests I want to do on that. I want to get my um, 12 volt aviation style plug on there so I can get it actually linked up to the 12 volt system on the boat. We're Primarily, as I've, I spoke earlier, most of our stuff has run 230 volts off all the sockets. But our LED lights above me, LED lights throughout the boat. Um, we have a freshwater pump, um, wastewater pump, 
and there's a, a little extractor fan in the toilet, um, extractor fan in the bathroom, all those are run from uh, the 12 volt system. Um, so it'd be nice to get that hooked up to that, get the uh, lead acid batteries disconnected and the main thing I need to do, which I'll cover in future videos, is upgrade my, my solar. I've got 695 on the roof, and as I've said, this has got two inbuilt MPPTs, each which will take um, 1200 watts of solar, so 2400 watts uh, potentially I can get rigged up. If I can do that, and then possibly have another expansion, uh, another B300 uh, battery pack then I can be totally totally self-sufficient get rid of the shore power uh, rely primarily on the solar um, to recharge the battery we have an onboard built-in generator a travel pack and with how quick this charges from the mains um, we can turn the engine on run run that up and a combination of the solar and that mains charger um, that will get this back up to full capacity in no time um, with, the, with the goal of being able to run the whole boat, 230 volts, 12 volts, and also run the immersion heater as well to heat the water. So a big, big shout out to Bluetti um, for sending me this to do the review on. I'll put all the links to their website down below. At the moment, I haven't got any promotion codes from Bluetti. Maybe they'll uh, give me some to pass on to you guys, but they're always having tons and tons of offers on across their range of products so i'm sure if you check on their website from time to time you'll see the the latest offers that are there well that's about all from me next video will be a narrowboat stroke uh, camper van video and uh, debbie will be with me in that video she doesn't do technical stuff it doesn't interest her whatsoever so she's off shopping yeah just um, one more thing if there's anything you think I've missed, anything I've got wrong, anything that you could add, put it in the comments below because other people read the comments and um, they get a wealth of information from there. If you enjoyed this little video, hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell um, icon to get future notifications of any videos up I upload. And I will endeavour to answer all of the comments to the best of my ability. And I'll see you all next time.